plugin that comes with the Fire Studio project is the Master Verb LE, a really quick and easy way to add reverb to your projects. So I'm going to go into Ableton and show how to set up the PreSonus Fire Studio project with that, both for live vocals and for affecting your tracks that are already in place in the timeline. The Master Verb LE plugin comes with PreSonus Fire Studio Project and is a powerful plugin that can be found under your plugin devices in Ableton, in this case under my Wave Arts tab, which is the company that developed Master Verb. And if I open that and drag it onto my timeline, I've dragged it onto the timeline. It's going to be created in a similar way to my Camel Crusher. I've applied it to Metalhead, which is the name of this uh, drum loop I've brought in. You can hear it right now. Now you'll notice at the moment that I have the master verb turned off, but I'm going to switch it on right now and play back the drum track again. Now one thing I love about Ableton that a lot of other programs don't have is the ability to apply an XY control right here and also control a lot of the parameters without even entering the program. You'll notice if I want to uh, do decay time, for example, and room size, I can apply them to this XY controller. If you had any type of keyboard with an XY controller built in, that could actually be assigned to this. And you could use it to scroll all over the place with your effects. Now let's open the Master Verb LE and take a look at the inner workings of this plugin. When opening any plugin in Ableton, you want to select the wrench tool that's right here. And it will bring up your plugin. This is the actual interface for the Master Verb. One thing you'll notice here. We have the XY controller again for both size and time, and we have a 3D display to explain where we're at in that. When you first open the master verb, you'll notice several controls enable. This obviously enables and disables the effect. Undo. A and B, so you can assign two different master reverbs to your set. So let's play that back while doing that. So let's say you want to have a reverb that was more of a room reverb. We can actually pull this back and do that again. For those new to using reverb, or if you're in a hurry, there are a lot of good presets in here. First you'll see uh, they have a tiny room, bright. Studio. Nightclub, concert hall, cathedral, scatter burp, and I really don't know what this, this is, and I really don't know what this is, but it's called menace verb. Ricochet. And slapback echo. So to create your own preset in the master verb, you want to go to file, click new preset file, and in this case we'll put it on our desktop. Just as a master test. And here we have the master verb again. And now you'll notice that it'll actually allow us to save that preset. So we could change it up a little bit. So let's program our own. I want this to have kind of a basement feel like I'm playing in a dank basement. So let's uh, grab this and pull it back a little bit in size. But now it's a question of how long I want the delay to be.
And we can change up the early damping and late damping as well to uh, kind of tweak that. Now I'm noticing that my reverb's going to the red, so I'm going to pull down the output a little bit to uh, pull back on some of that. Whenever these turn red, that means you're actually peaking, so if you click them, it should go back to normal. I'll pull my output way down, test it again. Still in the red, so I'm going to pull it down as well, again. The right side is still going into the red just a bit, so I'm going to pull it down a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Now obviously this makes my drums sound a little hollow, so I'm going to want to go back into the drums and actually try to beef them up a little bit. In chaining your effects, I would recommend having the reverb after the EQ, as trying to EQ after the reverb might actually cause more distortion than you want, and might not give the desired effect. What we're really worried about here is the actual beefiness, if you will, of the drums. So let's go back to the drums. Okay, so I'm going to open up my drums and add an EQ. Let's hear this at the moment. Pretty hollow, so we want to add an EQ to try to uh, compensate for that. In between the reverb and the impulse drum machine. In this case, the reverb makes the high stand out quite a bit, so I'm going to try to roll those off just a bit. If I select number four on my EQ, I can actually roll off those highs. Now, of course, this depends on what sound you're going for. In this case, this is more of a techno loop, so we want something really heavy in the low end. But now I can really hear my reverb starting to just destroy my beat, so I want to pull back a bit. So you'll notice there's a wet dry control in the master verb. I'm actually going to pull that down to about midway and try now. Much better, although I'm still peaking on the output. The peaking there is not too bad, so I'm just going to leave it at the moment. And we're going to check these drums again. Although it sounds pretty weak in my headphones, I think what we're hearing here is actually probably a pretty solid beat. So we're going to check it on the speakers. Again, the reason for using the verb is probably more aesthetic than anything else. In this case, I might not even want reverb on this drum track, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with the master verb applied to drums. I'm Bill Holland for GearWire.com, and this has been the master verb that comes with the PreSonus Fire Studio project.